Welcome to the Bible Quiz. In this video, let's delve into the life of Jesus Christ, a central and revered figure in biblical history. Jesus, also known as Jesus of Nazareth, was a preacher, teacher, and spiritual leader in the early first century. Born into a Jewish family in Bethlehem, his life and mission became central to the Christian faith. Although his public ministry spanned only about three years, from approximately age 30 to 33, the impact of Jesus on the world has continually spread and deepened. His teachings, including the Sermon on the Mount and the miracles he performed, attracted thousands of followers and believers. Join us on a captivating journey to explore the life and teachings of Jesus with our collection of 25 interactive multiple choice questions. These quizzes aim to enhance your understanding of his profound impact and make Bible study both enjoyable and accessible. Let's get started. Question 1. What was the name of the high priest's servant whose ear Peter cut off during Jesus' arrest? A. Malchus B. Caiaphas C. Barabbas D. Gamaliel You get 10 seconds. That's A. Malchus John chapter 18, verse 10. Then Simon Peter, who had a sword, drew it and struck the high priest's servant, cutting off his right ear. The servant's name was Malchus. This verse describes Peter's impulsive action to defend Jesus during his arrest, demonstrating Peter's loyalty and the tense atmosphere of the situation. Question 2. At what age did Jesus start his public ministry? A. 20, B, 25, C, 30, D, 35. You get 10 seconds. That's C, 30, Luke chapter 3, verse 23. Now Jesus himself was about 30 years old when he began his ministry. Jesus started his public ministry at around the age of 30, marking the beginning of his active teaching and healing period which profoundly impacted Christian theology and history. Question 3. During his temptation in the wilderness, how many days did Jesus fast? A. 20 B. 30 C. 50 D. 40 You get 10 seconds. That's D. 40 Matthew chapter 4 verse 2 after fasting 40 days and 40 nights, he was hungry. Jesus' 40-day fast in the wilderness symbolizes spiritual discipline and preparation, setting the stage for his subsequent temptation by Satan and illustrating his human vulnerability and divine strength. Question 4. What did Pilate offer the crowd as a choice for Jesus' release? A. Simon B. Herod C. Barabbas D. Lazarus You get 10 seconds. That's C. Barabbas, Matthew, chapter 27, verse 17. So when the crowd had gathered, Pilate asked them, Which one do you want me to release to you, Jesus Barabbas, or Jesus who is called the Messiah? Pilate's offer to the crowd, choosing between Jesus Barabbas and Jesus Christ, 
highlights the political and social tensions of the time, ultimately leading to the pivotal decision of Jesus' crucifixion. Question 5. On what mountain did the transfiguration of Jesus take place? A. Mount of Olives B. Mount Sinai C. Mount Carmel D. High Mountain You get 10 seconds. That's D, High Mountain, Matthew chapter 17, verse 1. After six days, Jesus took with him Peter, James, and John, the brother of James, and led them up a high mountain by themselves. The transfiguration of Jesus, a significant event revealing his divine glory, occurred on a high mountain, the specific name of which is not mentioned in the scripture, symbolizing a spiritual rather than geographical significance. Question 6. How did Jesus ascend to heaven? A. Riding on a horse. B. Walking. C. Floating. D. Taken up in a cloud. You get 10 seconds. That's D, taken up in a cloud. Acts chapter 1, verse 9. After he said this, he was taken up before their very eyes, and a cloud hid him from their sight. This ascension, witnessed by his disciples, signifies Jesus' return to divine glory, marking the end of his physical presence on earth and the beginning of his spiritual leadership through the Holy Spirit. Question 7. During the Last Supper, which item did Jesus use to symbolize his body? A. Wine B. Bread C. Lamb D. Fish You get 10 seconds. That's B, bread. Matthew chapter 26, verse 26. While they were eating, Jesus took bread, and when he had given thanks, he broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat, this is my body. During the Last Supper, Jesus used bread as a symbolic representation of his body, signifying the upcoming sacrifice for the redemption of humanity. Question 8. Who helped Joseph of Arimathea bury Jesus' body? A. Martha B. Mary, the mother of Jesus C. Joseph of Arimathea D. Mary Magdalene You get 10 seconds. That's C, Joseph of Arimathea, Matthew chapter 27, verses 57 to 60. As evening approached, there came a rich man from Arimathea named Joseph, who had himself become a disciple of Jesus. Taking Jesus' body, he wrapped it in a clean linen cloth and placed it in his own new tomb that he had cut out of the rock. Joseph of Arimathea played a crucial role in burying Jesus, providing his own tomb for the purpose. Question 9. What did Jesus say when he forgave a paralyzed man's sins? A. Your faith has made you well. B. Go and sin no more. C. Son, your sins are forgiven. D. Today salvation has come to this house. You get 10 seconds.
that see. Son, your sins are forgiven. Mark chapter 2, verse 5. When Jesus saw their faith, he said to the paralyzed man, Son, your sins are forgiven. Jesus, moved by the faith of those who brought the paralyzed man, not only healed him physically, but also forgave his sins, emphasizing the connection between physical and spiritual healing. Question 10. What was the name of the place where Jesus was crucified? A. Mount Carmel B. Golgotha C. Mount Sinai D. Mount Zion You get 10 seconds. That's B, Golgotha, Mark chapter 15, verse 22. They brought Jesus to the place called Golgotha, which means the place of the skull. Jesus was crucified at Golgotha, known as the place of the skull, a significant location in the biblical account of the crucifixion. Question 11. On what day of the week was Jesus crucified? A, Friday. B, Tuesday, C, Sunday, D, Monday. You get 10 seconds. That's A, Friday, Mark, chapter 15, verses 42 to 43. It was preparation day, that is, the day before the Sabbath. Jesus was crucified on preparation day, which is the day before the Sabbath, indicating it was a Friday. This aligns with the traditional understanding of Good Friday as the day of Jesus' crucifixion. Question 12. After his resurrection, where did Jesus appear to his disciples before ascending into heaven? A. Mount Carmel B. Mount Hermon C. Mount Sinai D. Mount of Olives You get 10 seconds. That's D. Mount of Olives Acts chapter 1, verses 11 to 12. This same Jesus, which is taken up from you into heaven, shall so come in like manner as ye have seen him go into heaven. Then return they unto Jerusalem from the mount called Olivet, which is from Jerusalem a Sabbath day's journey. Jesus ascended to heaven from the Mount of Olives, marking the culmination of his post-resurrection appearances to his disciples. Question 13. Who discovered the empty tomb of Jesus? A. Salome B. Joanna C. Mary Magdalene D. Martha You get 10 seconds. That's C, Mary Magdalene. John, chapter 20, verses 1 to 2. Early on the first day of the week, while it was still dark, Mary Magdalene went to the tomb and saw that the stone had been removed from the entrance. Mary Magdalene was the first to discover the empty tomb of Jesus, a pivotal moment in the resurrection narrative. Her encounter played a significant role in the unfolding events. Question 14. What did Jesus say when he was crucified? A. Why have you forsaken me? B. Into your hands, my spirit. C. It is finished. D. Father, forgive them. You get 10 seconds.
That's D. D. Father, forgive them. Luke chapter 23 verse 34. Jesus said, Father, forgive them for they do not know what they are doing. And they divided up his clothes by casting lots. During his crucifixion, Jesus offered a profound prayer for forgiveness, displaying his boundless mercy even in the face of immense suffering, emphasizing compassion and grace. Question 15. Where did Jesus raise Lazarus from the dead? A. Bethlehem B. Bethany C. Bethsaida D. Bethel You get 10 seconds. That's B, Bethany. John chapter 11, verses 43 to 44. Now a man named Lazarus was sick. He was from Bethany. Jesus called in a loud voice, Lazarus, come out. The dead man came out, his hands and feet wrapped with strips of linen and a cloth around his face. Jesus speaks with authority, commanding Lazarus to come back to life, showcasing his divine power over death. Question 16. What was the occupation of Matthew, Levi, before becoming a disciple? A. Fisherman B. Tax collector C. Physician D. Tent maker You get 10 seconds. That's B, tax collector. Matthew chapter nine, verse nine. As Jesus went on from there, he saw a man named Matthew sitting at the tax collector's booth. Matthew, also known as Levi, was a tax collector before he followed Jesus, highlighting a transformative personal change upon encountering Christ. Question 17, what miraculous event occurred during the transfiguration of Jesus? A. Jesus' radiant transformation B. Healing the blind C. Walking on water D. Talking with animals You get 10 seconds. That's A, Jesus' radiant transformation, Matthew chapter 17, verse 2. There he was transfigured before them. His face shone like the sun, and his clothes became as white as the light. In the transfiguration, Jesus' appearance radiated divine glory, revealing his transcendent nature to Peter, James, and John. Question 18. Where did Jesus deliver the Sermon on the Mount? A. Mount Sinai B. Mount Carmel C. Mount Tabor D. Mountainside You get 10 seconds. That's D. Mountainside Matthew chapter 5, verses 1 to 2. Now when Jesus saw the crowds, he went up on a mountainside and sat down. His disciples came to him, and he began to teach them. The Sermon on the Mount, containing key teachings of Jesus, was delivered on a mountainside, emphasizing a setting of quiet reflection away from the crowds. Question 19. In which town did Jesus raise a widow's son from the dead? A. Nine B. Bethsaida C. Jericho D. Samaria You get 10 seconds.
That's A, 9. Luke chapter 7, verses 11 to 15. Soon afterward, Jesus went to a town called Nain, and his disciples and a large crowd went along with him. As he approached the town gate, a dead person was being carried out, the only son of his mother, and she was a widow. In Nain, Jesus compassionately raised a widow's son, showcasing his power over death and demonstrating empathy for the grieving. Question 20. Which disciple famously doubted Jesus' resurrection until he saw Jesus in person? A. Simon B. Bartholomew C. Thomas D. James You get 10 seconds. That's C, Thomas, John, chapter 20, verses 24 to 29. Unless I see in his hands the mark of the nails, and place my finger into the mark of the nails, and place my hand into his side, I will never believe. Thomas doubted Jesus' resurrection until he saw him in person and touched his wounds, leading to the term doubting Thomas. This illustrates the importance of faith. Question 21. How many times did Jesus feed a multitude of people with just a few loaves of bread and fish? A. Once. B. Twice. C. Three times. D. Four times. You get 10 seconds. That's B, twice. Jesus miraculously fed a multitude of people with a few loaves of bread and fish on two occasions as recorded in the Bible. The first instance is known as the feeding of the 5,000, Matthew chapter 14, verses 13 to 21. And the second is the feeding of the 4,000, Matthew chapter 15, verses 32 to 39. These events showcase his divine power and compassion for those in need. Question 22. What did Jesus say to the woman caught in adultery after her accusers left? A. You are forgiven. B. Neither do I condemn you. C. Go and sin no more. D. Your faith has saved you. You get 10 seconds. That's B, neither do I condemn you. John chapter 8, verses 10 to 11. Jesus straightened up and asked her, Woman, where are they? Has no one condemned you? No one, sir, she said. Then neither do I condemn you, Jesus declared. Go now and leave your life of sin. Jesus' response to the woman emphasizes forgiveness and the call to transformation, embodying mercy over judgment. Question 23. What was the final commandment Jesus gave to his disciples before ascending to heaven? A. Wait in Jerusalem for the Holy Spirit. B. Preach the gospel to every creature. C. Love one another. D. Go and make disciples of all nations. You get 10 seconds. That's D, go and make disciples of all nations. Matthew chapter 28, verses 19 to 20. Therefore go and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, and teaching them to obey everything I have commanded you. 
Jesus commissions his disciples to spread his teachings globally, emphasizing the mission of sharing the gospel with everyone. Question 24. Who recognized Jesus as the Messiah when he was presented at the temple as an infant? A. Simeon B. Anna C. Zechariah D. Elizabeth You get 10 seconds. That's A, Simeon, Luke, chapter 2, verses 25 to 32. Simeon took him in his arms and praised God, saying, Sovereign Lord, as you have promised, you may now dismiss your servant in peace, for my eyes have seen your salvation. Simeon, a devout man, recognized Jesus as the Messiah at the temple, fulfilling a divine promise and symbolizing Jesus' significance for both Israel and the Gentiles. Question 25. What did Jesus use to illustrate the concept of faith as small but the immense power? A. Mustard seed B. Fig tree C. Wheat grain D. Olive tree. You get 10 seconds. That's A. Mustard seed. Matthew chapter 17, verse 20. And Jesus said unto them, Because of your unbelief, for verily I say unto you, if ye have faith as a grain of mustard seed. Jesus used the tiny mustard seed to illustrate the immense power even a small amount of faith can have. Oh, wow! We've just completed a captivating journey through 25 questions about Jesus. I'm eager to hear about your experience. Please leave a comment below sharing the number of correct answers you achieved and the profound insights you've gained from delving into the life of Jesus. Your contributions are invaluable, not only enriching our community's knowledge, but also inspiring others on their spiritual journeys. If you found this quiz enlightening, consider sharing this video with your friends and family, inviting them to embark on this illuminating quiz. Together, we can create a ripple effect of understanding and appreciation for the timeless teachings of Jesus. Thank you for joining us on this enlightening adventure. Keep the conversation alive, keep sharing, and keep learning. Until next time, stay curious and stay connected.